Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here with the Lab Coats on Back Order, and we're here with episode number 59 of our Pokemon Sapphire playthrough. Winding down here in the Hoenn region, there's not much left to do before going back to the Pokemon League and taking on the Elite Four. In the last episode, we checked out the Safari Zone. Well, first of all, we finished up on the routes just to the west of Pacific Log Town with all the fast-moving currents. I think we got everything there, but if I did miss anything, feel free to leave me a comment below and remind me I can go back and get that. But then we did check out the Safari Zone as much as we could, and I think I got everything in there as well. The only thing left that I can think of to check out is Meteor Falls, and there's some hidden areas in back that we can use Waterfall to go check out. But I guess with that, after this, the only thing left is to head back to the Pokemon League and take on the Elite Four, which might be happening tomorrow. I don't know how long it's going to take us to get through Meteor Falls, but let's kind of speed through things a little bit, starting off with, of course, a usual team recap. I don't want to fly. Calm yourself down, Majestic. All right, Majestic, our level 42 Altaria is first. Natural Curability, healing status conditions upon switching out of battle. Naughty Nature is a boost for attack and dropping special defense. Still, her stats are very nice in the low to high 80s. Holding King's Rock to possibly cause flinching with Dragon Breath, Fly, Dragon Dance, and Safeguard. Next on the team, we have Scruff the Manectric at level 43 with Static Ability, paralyzing foes on contact against her. Relaxed Nature is a boost to defense, dropping speed. And she has... I didn't even... Yeah, I checked the stats for Majestic. What am I thinking? Anyway, Special Attack is the best stat for Scruff with 112, 108 for speed. And she's holding Focus Band because if you look at the uh, defenses and Special Defense, don't look too long. They're pretty bad. But anyway, she has Shockwave, Bite, Thunder Wave, and Flash. Next, we've got Smarty the Knocked Owl at level 43, one of our Pokemon Johto uh, alumni. He has the Insomnia ability, preventing falling asleep, and Docile Nature is neutral, so no stats are going to be affected by that. So he has a nice, basic special defense of 103, and the moveset is Peck, Dream Eater, Hypnosis, and Reflect. Next, we have Skippy, our level 43 Swampert, the starter Pokemon given to us by Professor Birch back in Little Root Town. Torrent ability, boosting water moves in a pinch. Lax Nature is up for defense, down for special defense. And his attack stat is the best at 114, 113 for defense. Soft Sand is the held item, powering up the Mud Shot. He also has Surf, Foresight, and Rock Tune. And last but not least, we have Bukemon the Hariyama at level 43. Guts ability, boosting attack with a status condition. And Lonely Nature, upping attack while dropping defense. I had to stop and think about that for one brief moment, but you see the powerful attacks at 128. But he's pretty slow, that's why he's got the Quick Claw to possibly outspeed. He has Fake Out, Rock Smash, Belly Drum, and Vital Throw. Now, last active member is Bukemon. We also have Die Bomb the Gyarados here. He has been injured, and we can't use him again for the rest of this playthrough, but I kind of need somebody that can Waterfall, and he's the one to go with Waterfall. Plus, I do need to do some diving as well. Actually, yeah. There's still a bunch of underwater routes to check out, so I don't think we're going to do the Pokemon League this weekend. I'll probably save that for next weekend, because I have a lot of underwater areas to find items in. Now, what is the first place to go to here? Bear with me as I try to find my bearings around here. I have a couple of random topics of discussion that I can talk about. First of all, I guess I can talk about how I really like... Now, not just, you know, financial-wise speaking, but I really like the fact that I have advertising on the channel now, because the next few episodes, or rather previous episode plus the next one coming up on Monday of Pokemon Moon. I'm having fun putting advertisements at cliffhangery type moments. You know, moments of real stress and intensity. You don't know what's going to happen next. I did that with in episode 38 back on Wednesday. I did that when I was going uh, sending Icona the Sandy Gast up against the Galisopod of Team Skull's leader Guzma. Now, spoilers if you haven't seen that yet, but I guess I came down here for no reason. But uh, it was pretty funny in that fight. He takes High Lunatone, but he takes a... Well, Icona takes a pretty powerful Razor Shell attack. Super effective. Survives with 2 HP. Now, I decided what I want to do is put an ad right before the hit happens. So you guys are going to have to come back after the ad break and be like, you know, what's going to happen? Are you going to survive that? And I fear that might build up some pretty interesting, exciting moments for you folks out there. That's not the last time I'm going to be putting an ad break at a sort of climactic moment. A moment of uncertainty of what's going to happen to the Pokemon in question. So I'm looking forward to doing stuff like that. But here, ha or here we have a secret area of Meteor Falls that you normally can't access. I haven't been here yet, have I? Not that I can recall. Now, are there... Can't really get up here? No, I've got to go through the... Uh, down this ladder here. It's going to be a little bit of maze work to find my way through here. We see a level 38 Gold Bat. That's actually not too bad for training. Let's go with Dragon Breath and flinch this out. Oh, wait. Inner Focus Ability. Of course. Can't flinch you out. Could I fly? I could. Will it do enough damage? Is the question. The answer is critical hit. I'll take that. 
little bit of experience added for Majestic. So if I'm at five, or if I'm over five levels above the no, if I am five levels above the Wild Pokemon, I'll probably just let it go, just sort of speed through this a little bit. But if I'm not over five, if I can actually gain some decent experience from that, then I'll get the knockout because every little bit of training is going to help us preparing for the Elite Four. It might sort of minimize the grinding montage that we have to do. For example, we're already over five levels above this thing. So long, Lunatone. We'll let you go for this time. But if you have any higher level friends you want to send my way, tell them where to find me. So, the ads are kind of fun. I like trying to keep the dramatics happening in the in the playthrough for you folks. Test the memory. 22 is Solar Beam. 23 is a move I do not know off the top of my head. It's not Thunderbolt. It's Iron Tail. Don't know if I'm going to use it, but let's just see who could learn that. Majestic. Do you even have a tail? Scruff does. Skippy does. So they make sense. Why could Dive Bomb not learn it? Dive Bomb is about 90% tail. Although, no, you could probably say it's more body than tail, I guess. But anyway, you'd think, you'd think a Gyarados could learn Iron Tail. They can learn Iron Head, though, which I really like. Alright, well, go back. Oh, that's not worth the experience. So, once I'm done recording this episode, I was considering, do I want to record the second episode for Sunday right after this one? And I'm going to probably not do that. I'm going to wait and see if there's any comments for me to respond to. I can talk about them in the episode of the next one that I can record on Saturday evening. Alright, so this thing could have a rock slide. Actually, this thing could explode. Whoops, I wanted to hit B to back out. But we'll be fine. Cosmic power. We're going to choose to walk away from this because... I'm not looking to lose any Pokemon to any explosions anytime soon. Plus, your defenses have gone up. It's going to take way too long to bring you down. But after this episode, I'm deciding to go ahead and put some time into preparing the Mega Beedrill deck, or Mega Beedrill EX deck, that I'm going to bring to tomorrow's event, or technically today's event, as you're watching this, at Heroes Beacon, my local Pokemon League. As I continue to talk about that, let's get into a battle. There we go. I figured they don't talk to you until you talk to them in the double battles. We've been married for 50 years. The bond we share as a couple could never be broken. Very good. C applause for these folks for sticking together for so long. Sometimes it's kind of a rarity in this world. I guess they come from a previous time when... It's like if people have said... Um, what am I trying to say with this? Well, we're going to fake out it, unfortunately. I'm going to try fly on the the uh, Metacham. And I'm going to get my low defense Pokemon out of here, I think. These are level 40s. Skippy probably is the best. So let's do that. But yeah, they say sometimes the older generation comes from a generation where if something was broken, they would work to fix it as opposed to like throw it away and, you know, go for something new instead. So, trying the Rock Tomb, are you? So I guess what I'm trying to say is you gotta double protect. You know, forget about what I'm saying. I want to focus on this fight. You're really going to double protect yourself. Let's slow this Hariyama down, because it's apparently way too fast for my liking. And that is not quite another one-hit KO. And, okay, okay. We don't even have Pokemon Refresh in this game, but we'll dodge that. Let's... Surf. We don't hit our partner in Gen 3, fortunately, with a Surf Attack. How much damage do we do to the Metachamp? Probably nothing. Moderately nothing. I do think a mud shot brings down the Hariyama. <laughs> just kidding, apparently. But I'm gonna just go mud shot, mud shot, mud shot, take this thing down. But anyway, again, just rambling. But congratulations to this uh, this couple for sticking together for as long as they have. It's very commendable in this day and age. So as I say, I'm gonna prepare my Mega Beedrill EX deck. Not that I actually compete at the Pokemon League because I am there as the, uh, more in the official capacity to help players, you know, go through with the game and answer judge questions and such. I do like playing casual matches before and after the official tournaments are done, though. And just kind of showing off the decks that way, giving folks some ideas on some new creative strategies that maybe they don't see a lot of, and how do we miss the mud shot? I'll tell you what we don't miss. We don't miss fly attack. And surf, neither. But I'm going to have some fun trying out the Mega Beedrill. I don't have everything I need for it in the actual cards yet. I found almost, it's an impossibility for me to find Abyssal Hand Octillery from any of the, was it Breakthrough expansion, I think? Oh dear, we've lost my dear husband. Thanks for the cash, old folks, I'll take that. 50 years of marriage. If we ever argued, we always settled it with a Pokemon battle. See? You know, that's all you need in life. 
battle, like the Pokemon battle. You know how many world wars could have been prevented if the, war, the uh, countries just went to battle in the Pokemon games? Probably none. We've been married for 50 years. Come to think of it, I've yet to beat my dear wife in a battle, so she always wins. Interesting. You gotta step up your game there, sir. Are you a trainer? You're a trainer. This is where we dragon users do our training. The champion even visits. Now, do you see how special it is here? The champion, you say? Is this champion by any chance a dragon-type trainer? Now, I know you know. I know I know. I know that's an Altaria. I know I got one, too. So, Dragon Breath. <clears throat> gonna Dragon Claw me in response? Or would you have learned Dragon Breath also at this point? Yeah, take down. Does that make much sense? Not particularly. Maybe as a Swablu, you would have Stab, but... Dragon Flying. You don't gain anything from takedown. You just gain recoil damage, essentially. Down goes the first Dragon type. How many more do you have? Level 43 Majestic. One left. Double the Altaria. Actually, triple the Altaria, including my own. And we paralyze? Nope. Especially not now with Safeguard, but fortunately, Dragon Breath gets the knockout. I'm going to have some fun at the League tomorrow. We are doing our first official League Challenge. Nope, sorry, League Cup, which is basically like a League Challenge, but with added prize support. Ugh, I didn't expect you to be so strong. Well, I have been training for quite some time. The road ahead remains long and harsh. When will my Pokemon and I become the best? Not for a while, I'm going to say, because it could take me on. All right, uh, not to toot my own horn too much, though. Where do we go from here? I'm going to take this route first. I can always make my way back up. Hey, I found myself a ladder. Let's see what is down this path. I don't even remember what items are in here. But hopefully we'll find something pretty interesting. Uh, what was I talking about? Well, let me hold off on whatever I was talking about. No, actually, now I can talk about it. Random encounter. I was talking about... Oh, yes, it's a League Challenge. No, I keep saying Challenge. It's a League Cup, which is a new thing they're putting in Pokemon... Play, or Play Pokemon events. You get better prize support. There are special play mats to stand for the Play Pokemon events. And, uh... I believe there's other price support in the uh, terms of special cards you can only get from these challenges. Pick myself up TMO2. If memory serves, that's not Focus Punch, that's 01. I can't remember what TMO2 is. Dragon Claw makes sense because this is, I believe, the only room in the entire game of Gen 3. Maybe Saf or sorry, maybe uh. Emerald is different, but I'm pretty sure this is the only place you can find Wild Bagon, which of course is the pseudo-legendary, as the uh, people tend to call it, of Gen 3. There weren't any others, were there? Would Flygon be kind of considered a pseudo-legendary? I don't know, it's another one of the dragon types of the generation. And there we are, there's a Bagon right there. I don't think I've ever actually encountered one, especially not this fast. Now, it's a rarity, sure. But we're not going to hurt it. It's a cute little baby bag on, you know? And if you've been following the channel for some time, you've seen some of the previous Wi-Fi battles that I have done, which I will eventually be getting back to in Sun and Moon, then um, bear with me if there's something in my eye. I think I'm okay. Anyway, I do have a Salamence in my team from another generation yet to come. I don't add one here in Hoenn, but you'll see as we continue through the different playthroughs here on the channel. So what do we find, well, after this random encounter, what do we find down here? So I'm going to be pretty interested to see who wins the first official League Cup at Heroes Beacon, our Pokemon League. And there's still something near my eye. Stop interfering with this playthrough. And now I'm getting all sidetracked in what I'm trying to say. But I find myself a PP up. i got to start using those. Every time I pick one up, I say that and I forget to do it. But I'll probably do that before taking on the Pokemon League and see which of my active Pokemon I want to sort of boost the moves up for. But I guess the only other thing that I was thinking of talking about here, something that was sort of coming to mind the past little while, uh, it's going to be sort of like Professor Chaz is preaching a major life moment or something like that. It's not really going to be that big or important because I don't think... I don't think I'm that important to give out, you know, any sage wisdom or advice or anything like that, but if what I have to say does help anyone out with some, you know, some, what would it be, just basically some life lessons and life, life encouragement or something like that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. Recently, a friend had described me as being, like, the kind of person who, you know, does what he wants and doesn't care what other people think. Now, in a way, I can see how that might sort of make sense, like, here I am, a grown man, I walk around town in my Charizard 2 playing Pokemon Go, and I really, like, you know, like it sounds like I don't care what people think, 
I wouldn't say that exactly. Like, kind of like anybody, you know, I want to sort of be respected and appreciated and stuff. So if people dislike me for some reason or if they don't like what I do or say, it doesn't bother me really that much. But there is still that thought of like, you know, well, it's too bad that people don't like me for it. So it's not that I don't care what people think. It's that I don't let it control what I choose to do. Like, you know, I still do what I want to do because I know if someone doesn't like it, that's one person. You know, there's other people out there that obviously like what I do, and I appreciate all the support and such that I get. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, it's all about peer pressure. And I'm fortunate to say that growing up, I never really had to, you know, I was never really subjected to peer pressure. In a way, it's kind of a bad thing, because growing up, I wasn't really all that popular. I say that, I, I didn't feel popular, yet for some reason, a lot of people seem to know who I was. Like, I would have many times in high school when people would see me in the hall and say, oh, hey Chaz, how's it going? And I would see them and I would be like, you know, oh, hey, not bad. And then we would cross paths and I would have to stop and sort of think, who was that? You know, I wouldn't know who that was. Anyway, as I'm rambling, it turns out we're done here in Meteor Falls. There's a lot less of this than I thought there was. But I say that, you know, I didn't feel totally amazingly popular or anything. So I never really felt like I had to do anything to fit in. So I guess even back then, I just did what I wanted to do and just uh, went about my life that way. So... The important thing to say, or the important thing I want you to take away from what I'm trying to say here is, whatever you want to do, if you feel good doing it, and if it doesn't cause any harm or negative or negativity to anyone around you, do what you want to do. Don't feel like you have to change who you are to fit in with people, because you might not fit in with the people that are currently around you, but there's a group out there for everybody. Another friend of mine was actually talking about the idea that he wants to start doing some, uh, maybe some YouTube videos of his own, and he's not sure which games to really focus on or how to do them. And I just said to him, do what you want to do. There's going to be an audience out there for whatever anybody wants to put out there. So and the important thing about life is you got to be true to yourself because when you start to change who you are for other people and for the approval of other people, you stop being who you are. And that can't be a really comfortable feeling, you know? You got to do what you do. It's like kind of when I was starting this uh, series, or not this, this series, but, you know, my YouTube channel in general. I was trying to think, what kind of a name do I want to go by? Because a lot of the people that I watch on YouTube, they do have aliases and, you know, different usernames that they go with. Uh, I'm going to switch... Who needs the next level? Actually, Skippy needs the next level. Bukemon will put you... Um, let's put Smarty in the second slot. There we go. I guess now I can start doing some exploration of underwater areas here. But I was deciding, do I want to go with a different username or... You know, if I did, what kind of a username would I go with? And I was trying to, you know, think and consider all these different ideas. In the end, I decided to go with just my actual name, Chaz. Because if I chose a different name, I would feel like I am always in character. And I'm not being me. I'm being the online persona that I have created. And I feel like I have to live up to that particular, I guess, persona, right? So, I don't know if I would feel comfortable doing that in the long run. Maybe at first, for a little while, I would enjoy doing it, but... Eventually, I might not feel like I am myself. So at that point, I decided I'm just gonna I'm gonna stick with being who I am, Professor Chaz. Ooh, hidden item. Oh come on, really? What can I toss out underwater here? What do I not need? What can I litter the ocean floor with? You know what? I should probably sell some of this stuff. Let's do that. I'm gonna go above water, and I'll fly back to Sotopolis. No, you know what? I'm going to fly to somewhere that I can easily get to a Pokemon Mart at. Uh, where are you? Majestic. Let's fly. You know, we haven't gone back to visit Dad lately. And we're not going to. But we're going to his town just to sell some stuff off. Because who knows what other buried treasure or submerged treasures there are going to be at the bottom of the seafloor. Under the sea. Downward. What is it? Everything's better. Downward Twitter. Take it from me. I don't want to buy stuff. I want to sell stuff. There we go. So, I was probably just rambling a little bit there. Hey, I can sell that. I don't use that in Nuzlocke-style stuff. Kind of rambling, but hopefully you get the idea what I'm trying to say. You know, be true to yourself, and you'll feel better for it. Don't feel like you have to change what you're doing to uh, sort of fit in with other people. All right, is there anything else we can sell? I think we're going to keep everything. Yeah, that's good there. I guess now we'll fly back to Sotopolis, and I'm going to deposit some other things in the PC that I don't want to get rid of, but I don't need for the moment, like that PP up, for example. And all the way back to the eastern side of Hoenn we go. <clears throat> what else was I going to talk about? I think that basically covers all the main topics of discussion. 
I want to go back a little bit and talk about how I say the ads are kind of fun to do, though, because, like, all I'm going to say is I've already recorded the episode of Pokemon Moon for Monday. It's a pretty interesting episode, and if you want to see some really tense moments, I recommend you check that out. It's going to go up on... Actually, no, here's something else I'm going to talk about. Um, what I'm doing right now... Hang on, let me just... I don't want to put the lemonade away. See, I'm focusing on too many things at once. But what I'm doing is... Blanking. I'm blanking on what I want to talk about. Bear with me. You ever have those moments when you have something perfectly in your mind and then suddenly it is gone? Something to do with how the YouTube channel is changing and growing or some other crazy nonsense like that that I was going to ramble on about for ages. Maybe to do with the ads. How can I not remember? I feel like just pausing right now and sitting here for as long as it takes me to remember and maybe editing that stuff out or keeping it in just so we can actually start a timer. See, how long does it take me to get my point back? Alright, a wild chin chow. <laughs> as interesting and exciting as that is. This is terrible. I'm not so old I'm losing my memory, am I? I mean, I'm not super, super young, but I got myself a heart scale. I'll take that. That's another thing I gotta do at 1.2 is go back and see the move relearner and see what can I teach my Pokemon for possible beneficial moves to use in the Pokemon League. So, maybe that's what I'll do in the next episode. Or, that's probably more interesting to be done between episodes. What I'll probably do is do the research between episodes and come back and show you on screen the moves that I'm going to teach. That way we can speed through it a little bit and not take too much time up during the playthrough itself. But, you know what? I still have that nagging thought of, what am I forgetting? There's no hidden item there. Weird they have that tiny little outcropping, but no item. But we get ourselves an Ultra Ball here. Huh. Wait, I might be getting it. Talking about stuff for the channel. Well, I don't know, but something else did just come to mind. Fortunately, I was trying to rack my brain, something else came up. Something I want to do as soon as we complete the main story and... Well, not just the main story. I've heard that in Pokemon Moon, there's quite a bit of post-game material. Once I finish, I guess, the main story parts of main game and post-game, what I want to do is eventually start doing viewer battles in the Pokemon, uh, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, like Wi-Fi battles, sort of to uh, what we're going to be doing with the TCG is to throw some, uh, I guess, shout-outs to you folks out there and give you some recognition on the channel as thanks for supporting all the time that we've supported, or you've supported, the channel to get us to the uh, subscriber count that we are currently at, and just the level of interest and support in the channel in general. So, I'm not sure when that's going to happen. I'm probably going to be starting the TCG near the end of the month, because I've got one more idea that's been rec uh, requested, but sort of hanging out for quite some time that I haven't gotten around to yet, because of the long hiatus I took over the holiday season. But, eventually... Excuse me. Eventually, I want to start doing some viewer battles in both the TCG and the video game itself. Now, I think something was relating to that that I wanted to talk about. But darn if I'm going to remember it. Watch, okay. If I remember it, I'll jump into my little notepad that I have with all my topics of discussion. I'll jot that down immediately as soon as I remember. That way I can talk about it in the next episode. But for the time being, it's going to have to go by the wayside. Let's go a little bit more searching down here. Ooh, this is an interesting area. With a single hidden item. Did I already come here? I must have been down here already. I don't remember doing it. That's what happens when you're just doing uh, two episodes per week on weekends. You lose track of what you've done already in the game. Are there any trainers that we can take on too? I see somebody hidden around that rock. But if I've already gone down that dive spot, I might have already dealt with that trainer, too. Let's just take a quick swim or surf around the water here. See if it is something we can take on. If we can even get to her. No, I think... Now watch me say this, and I'm going to be completely wrong, but I think you got to go through a certain dive spot and come up somewhere else to actually battle her. That means she must have some sort of special, amazingly rare Pokemon to uh, take on. Hmm... How would we access her? We can't get to her from here. Well, this takes us up higher, I believe. We couldn't go this high, could we? No, this was blocked off. Here we go. All right. 
Let's see what this trainer has in store for us. That's the spot you attack me on, Wingle? Go away. You're slowing things down. I want to deal with this trainer. I didn't think we battled her yet. I'm a mermaid, and that's why I wanted to take her on. You know, that reference earlier to Under the Sea, sung by Sebastian and the Little Mermaid? I want to fight... You're not a mermaid. You lied to me. Okay, level 32 Meryl. Not really much to worry about. Mudshot, one shot's the Meryl. We are 11 whopping levels above. So long, Meryl. If we can get through this trainer quickly enough, we have just enough time to uh, go down, go underwater and see what items are there. Hmm. Eventually, I am going to have to get one of these Whalmer and evolve it up to Whale Lore because, as somebody had pointed out at some point previous episode, in order to capture a certain legendary in a future game, I gotta try to find the Reggie brothers in this game. The Reggie trio of Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, and Reggie Steel. One little topic that I can mention, and if you guys leave comments down below, how do you pronounce Reggie Ice? You know, as people say, there's only one eye. My fantasy bursts as if we're a bubble. Blub, blub, blub. So there's only one eye in Reggie Ice. And I'm gonna say Reggie Ice because that's how I pronounce it. You thrashed me. I want to disappear in a wave of despair. But. Some, okay, so some people point out that, of course, Reggie Rock, Reggie Steel, they have an I in it, so you pronounce the I, but they say that Reggie Ice has only one I, so it should be Reg Ice. Now, to me, it makes a sort of sense, but on the other hand, it doesn't, because if you were to spell Reggie Ice with two I's, it would look weird, first of all. Second of all, the thing is, there's a, the, the, the prefix of Reggie, I believe, means royal. Or some sort of, you know, meaning of the word royal, something like that. So, to call it Reg Ice, it's no longer having that same prefix as Reggie Rock and Reggie Steel. I'm just gonna fly back, to, excuse me, to Sotopolis City to end off this episode as I ramble a little bit more about the uh, Reggie Ice pronunciation. So, I still say Reggie Ice because another sort of topic, I think I talked about this, but another sort of topic that, or another point that helps this topic is. In the Sonic the Hedgehog series, there is a stage called Casinoopolis. It only has one O, yet in-game, in Sonic Heroes, Amy Rose calls it Casinoopolis. So, that does prove that in some instances, you can pronounce this, the, uh, the vowel twice, and still have the, the uh, original pronunciation of the name. So, that's why I go Reggie Ice. But, again, I think I covered that already. I'm not sure if it's in Sapphire or a different game, but... Anyway, that is going to wrap up the episode for today. I guess tomorrow, like I said, we'll do some more diving underwater and see what else we can find. If I run out of time, or basically if I have plenty of time afterwards and there's really not much more to do, I'm going to do a little bit of on-screen grinding to prepare for the Elite Four. And the following weekend will be our attempt at taking on the Elite Four. Unless there are still some things I'm missing here in the Hoenn region. If there are, feel free to let me know what they are in a comment down below. And I'll see what I can do to get myself focused and get everything done in Hoenn before the Elite Four. But with all that, we are now done for the day. I want to say thanks for checking out today's episode. And if you enjoyed the episode, feel free to leave a like down below. And leave me some comments based on the stuff that I was talking about. Do you think I was rambling too much? Not enough. Any other topics of discussion you want me to talk about for tomorrow's episode, I'm all ears. Just let me know in the comments below. But with that, we are done. There is a link in the description to the entire playlist of Sapphire to get caught up. Because since these episodes are only two per week, and the Pokemon Moon episodes are sort of, you know, taking more precedent, or precedence, I think, then you might be a little bit lost on what's going on in Sapphire right now. As you can see, not too much story-wise, just exploration. But there is that link down there, and during the outro, there'll be some other links to some videos that I have done, plus a link to subscribe if you want to see some more weekly, or actually daily, Pokemon content here on the channel from Professor Chaz. But with all that, we are now done. I am signing off for the day. I want to say thanks for once again, thanks for once again, no, thanks once again for checking out the episode, and I'll catch you tomorrow.